In this video, we are going to discuss about a widening transition to a civil treaty alignment. Uh, actually, this is an extension of an existing civil treaty video. Uh, before watching this video, as a prerequisite, you have to watch another video. Uh, this is that video. This is the video you have to watch before uh, watching this video. Uh, you have to watch this assigning transitions to virtually any civil treaty subassembly part by Autodesk Technical Infrastructure Specialist Jeff Bartles. So, in this video, he is creating a new subassembly from the subassembly composer. So, you have to create that subassembly before continuing the things in my video. So, I expect all of you will assign, will uh, watch this video uh, before uh, watching my video. So we will move back to the civil 3D, 3D screen. Right now, what we are going to do here is we have an alignment here. In this alignment, we have a straight section, then spiral, then I have a curve, then again a spiral, then I have a straight section. So let us say in this straight section, we have a 1.75 meter offset uh, then that is a median part then at the curve this median part it the width of that median part is increased to 3.75 because of the sharpness of the curve this is kind of a side distance widening in geometric design so what we want to do is in a corridor we want to increase this 1.75 width up to 3.75 at this curve start but we have we need to do it in a gradual manner uh, usually we can apply linear transitions in civil 3d or uh, in our uh, civil 3d targeting but in this case linear transition won't work well because of this spiral uh, if you have a straight section without a spiral it will work well so you can use this polyline as a target because i have just uh, linked this start point to end point and make a linear transition here but since we have a spiral here this linear transition will not work well so this transition value may be uh, transition values may not have gradual increase throughout this section because of the spiral curve at the end also we have the same scenario so what we are going to do here is we are going to see how to apply a gradual transition at, at this point using a sub assembly called number generator which is created in the uh, said video uh, by jeff bartles so before doing that in that video he will say we need to create a profile uh, stating the width values actually what we are going to do is we are increasing the width from 1.75 to 3.75 but actually what we are doing is we are creating the a profile with that width values so you can see my profile start at the profile alignment start station this value this one this width value is given as the elevation value this elevation is 1.75 in civil 3d when we apply in the transition what actually happens is this elevation value will transfer as a width value to civil 3d assemblies so then we have that gradual increase of that civil 3d widening part of the curve so it uh, increases from 1.75 to 3.75 along the alignment then it goes with 3.75 width until the end of the curve then it gradually decreases up to the 1.75 so all those width changes are represent in elevation changes in this profile now we are going to go to this assembly what we are going what we are applying in the corridor so first we have this assembly part if i go here 
this width is 1.75 then after that we will attach a lane assembly here but we have to uh, introduce that width changing part into this sub assembly this is what we are going to do with that number generator sub assembly to add that one we go to here tool palette so in that video it will tell you how to add this sub assembly in your, into your tool palette so from here i have created that in a new palette so this is that number generator sub assembly i click here so i will insert it insert it before before this assembly you can see it inserted before this assembly so i press escape now so it looks like now this width is too much so to decrease this width you have to select this one this assembly here from here then go to properties not sub assembly properties but properties and make this default loop offset to 0.5 or some lower value zero is also okay but once you do that it will not show the change but if you regenerate you can make the change now it is okay so then you have to go to your uh, sub assembly properties select the sub assembly then go to sub assembly properties and i will make it a little bit clear here so go to construction tab then go to this link with an slope so i will go with this at the second row so we will tell civil 3d get with get the width from our number generator so it will override the default width and get the width from the number generator right so we'll click ok here so currently number generator width it is considering as zero so that's why it is coming to the start point now i am going to go to my corridor i have already created the corridor so i click go to properties then you have to go to i have uh, created default parameters for frequency and these ranges uh, so you don't have to worry much about that then i go to target settings so in the target settings this ncl means the number generator this one so we have to tell now the number generator we on from which profile you are getting the numbers so you have to click this one then you have to select the correct profile so since I have only one alignment i will select this profile from the drawing so you have several profiles here i have but the profile what i am interested is this one so the number generator will get the numbers from this profile and convert them into width values and apply it to the assembly so we we'll click this one and it says one found then i right click now it will so I'll tell you this is the profile you click so i will add it to this target area and click ok and also i click ok again and i will have a check mark here to create the corridor and rebuild the corridor so after some time the corridor will be created now you can see my width has been gradually increased up to this width increment like from 1.75 to 3.75 you can see this is not a linear increment but it is a very uh, natural very uh, constant gradual increment according to the alignment that is the best part of this number generator this is not a linear increment but it is a better gradual increment than a linear increment so if you go to the other side you will see the same scenario we have a better gradual increment from this point you can see you have a better gradual increment and once it come to the end it will automatically catch the uh, 1.75 width and at the start also it is automatically catching the 1.75 width from the profile and after that it will 
increasing up to 3.75 width then again it will continue with 3.75 width until at the end of the corridor end of the curve then it will gradually decrease to 1.75 again so this is how to apply a width transition gradual width transition uh, to a corridor uh, using a number generator especially this is uh, important when you have curves and spirals within the transition section that is the most important thing and at uh, at last but not least i have to mention that uh, this was actually first recognized by uh, one of my colleagues he asked me to uh, he tell, told me this story and asked me to create a video about this thing so that the other people also get in to know how to do these things correctly so i will thank him also for encouraging me to create this video